Hello, hello. Happy Wellness Wednesday. Welcome, welcome. This is Doc Swiner. Hello. How are you all? Let me get set up here. All right. Hey, Karen. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Let's see. Make sure you can see me okay. Hey, Miss Joyce. Hi. Hi, Nicole Rochester, MD. Sorry, I'll let me get my camera set up. Here we go. Hi, Chill92. I think that's Carlos. Hey, welcome. Welcome to Wellness Wednesday, you guys. Thank you for joining me. My name is Dr. Nicole Swiner, and I am a family doc, author, speaker, mom, wife, worker, all that good stuff, citizen <laughs> here in North Carolina. And thank you for joining me for my weekly Periscope. We call it Wellness Wednesday. Hey, hey, Carlos, how are you? Um, before we get started, and, and you know, sorry to, to start on a somber um, topic, but you know, this is uh, my format, and you can use your format and your uh, you know, soapbox, however you'd like. Hey, I'm glad you're doing well. Thanks for everyone joining in. Um, you know, unless you've had your head under uh, a rock or uh, hay uh, in the sand this morning. You may have heard of the um, unfortunate killing of Alton Sterling um, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Um, yeah, another black man um, killed at the hands of the police. And, you know, whatever you think about it, whatever your views, whatever your opinion, thanks for the hearts. You know, the, the, the truth is we all need to come together in this in this world. Hey, Lumperito, how are you? Um, hi, thanks for your girl. Yeah, so... Long story short, we all need to come together and come up with a better solution for the preservation of human life, of black men's lives, of black women's lives, of all lives. We need to come up with a better way of taking care of each other, being kind to one another and spreading love. So that's me on my soapbox. And so I send out prayers and condolences to all people who are going through the loss of loved ones um, by the hands of another person or in, in any way. I um, send prayers out and um, yeah, hope that. We all do better with each other and for each other. Anyway, now that we're done with that. So that has a little bit to do with Wellness Wednesday, right? So we're talking about prayers and yeah, don't, I, I, Lumperito, I, I, I did not watch the video on purpose because it just, it's depressing. Um, I just know it happened and it should not happen and it should happen less and we all need to do better to treat each other well and, and you know, preserve human life. Just, you know, the same way that we're as um, focused about preserving animal life and plant life and and all of this we need to hold the human race um up to a, a higher esteem as far as um just the importance of taking care of one another i don't know any other way any any other way to say it so thank y'all for letting me get that out i feel a little bit better now i think that's elizabeth oates signing on hello lady wellness wednesday so my Perry girls are here have some family some friends thank you so much for inviting followers so dr rochester uh, follow directions. Uh, I love to, hey, you made it. <laughs> she made it. Hey, Doc. So house rules for uh, my broadcast are, of course, hearts, 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 hearts. We love hearts. So tap your hearts if you like what we're saying. <laughs> Hopefully you do enjoy what we talk about today. Um, just like uh, Dr. Rochester did, when you swipe up, you can press a button to invite uh, followers on Twitter and on Periscope. So share this out to Twitter, share this on Periscope. I'm so, so thankful. Thank you, Karen. Ms. Karen just tweeted it out. Thank y'all so much for joining me. I appreciate this. So again, I'm Doc Swiner. If this is your first time, welcome. I do um, once or twice weekly periscopes. Um, the first one um, today, of course, is called Wellness Wednesday. And if there's time during the weekend, I do another one called No Superwoman Saturday or Sunday, depending on how busy I am with, you know, hubby and kids and resting uh, during the weekends, but I'm the author of How to Avoid the Superwoman Complex. So I like to call myself the Superwoman Complex Expert. And I have the second book coming out um, within the next couple of weeks. It's in printer's hands. I know people get tired of me. They're like, you keep saying it's coming. Where is it? It's in the hands of printers. <laughs> the second book. Yay. Hearts, hearts, hearts. Second book is called The Superwoman Complex, A Follow-Up Visit. It's coming. I've, I'm done writing book covers done, pictures. Thank you, Dr. Rochester. But you know, the printers just got to get their format and stuff together and we can start printing. So I'm planning on a, a big launch in August. But 
today. This is Wellness Wednesday. Didn't really have a great topic, so I just kind of put you know a Q and A question out there on social media and said, "Hey, ask Doc Swiner what questions do you have?" And I got a couple of them, so we'll we'll start with that. But if you, Nicole, yeah, just like me, Nicole, yay, uh, <laughs> I have a couple of uh, questions and topics. Hey, Wanda. Um, from social media. And so if you have questions, if you have comments, go, please feel free to throw them out. So first question I got on social media is from Rod Swiner, my wonderful brother-in-law. He wanted to know the importance of getting your physical exams. Okay. Hey, how are you? Physical exam. So there's been, you know, probably within the last five years, there's been some controversy about how important it is to get a physical. I mean, clearly when we were babies, newborns, toddlers in school, you know, the, the major importance was, of course, making sure we were meeting all those milestones. You know, are you are you speaking at the right time? Are you walking at the right time? Are you are you eating the right things? Are you growing? Um, can you hear? Can you see? And are your school vaccines up to date? So, you know, there were clear reasons, you know, because there were schools that, you know, you could not go to unless your vaccines were up to date. Right. Hey, DR1908. Welcome. Um, however, when we become adults, we generally fall off a little bit because number one, mommy and daddy aren't calling and making your appointments for you. So you actually have to be proactive in calling and making those appointments and staying up to date for your yearly exams. I clearly as a family doctor um, am a huge advocate for physicals because it's the best way to get preventive health care, meaning care that prevents disease and care that can hopefully catch things before it becomes an issue, right? Heart hearts, that's good. So um, I am a fan that even, thanks for inviting followers, Wanda. She's following directions, <laughs> as she always does. Wanda is always a big supporter and does uh, does what we need to do on, on our, our live feeds. But um, particularly, you know, once you get out of college and, you know, you don't have a student health uh, clinic that's right, you know, down, down a couple of doors from your door, you have to be vigilant in calling and making those physical appointments. So Rod, I think physical exams are truly important because say if you come for one of my physicals, if you're over 40, woman or male, uh, female or, or male, come in and we do a screening EKG. And it's different, you know, depending on who your doctor is. I do a screening EKG because there are heart abnormalities that you wouldn't know you had unless I checked for it. I check for um, A1C, your hemoglobin A1C for diabetes. I check thyroids, especially um, for my ladies, because thyroid disease, either hypo or hyper, can creep up without any symptom whatsoever in your 30s and 40s, and I check it in the level of work, and we know. Cholesterol, STD, got to get your STD checkup. Some of those things, a lot of those things you have and, and have been exposed to, and we never know until we get the blood test ordered. And so there are are, you know, cancer prevention things, your pap smears, your colonoscopies, things, mammograms, hugely important that you should do on a regular basis. And you should talk to your doctor about how frequently to do them. But again, you don't know you have some of these disorders until you're screened and you're tested for them. So preventive medicine is key. Go get your checkups, folks. First question. Good question. Y'all agree? Let me get some yeses if y'all agree. Physical exams are still important even, even in adulthood. Let me get some yeses. Yes, yes, yes. Dr. Nicole says yes. Let's see if my guys, I saw Carlos on there. Let me see if he says yes. <laughs> Hopefully my, my, my guys, I love my guys. I don't know for some reason my men won't come and get checked out like women do. I, I guess women are just right, right ladies. Women are just kind of used to coming and getting that yearly pap smear. It's not, not necessarily yearly nowadays. The recommendations have changed, but we're just in that mode of going and getting checked out. Too many take routine care for granted. Yep. Uh, Dr. Oates is a dentist. Yes. So she can agree. You got to get those routine dental checkups too. Yes. Good, 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 good. Yeah. Men do, men tend to wait till something's wrong. I, I know Carlos is going to be a good example here. I know he doesn't wait until something goes wrong. <laughs> he gets his uh, dental checkups every six months. He gets his physical exams every year because you, you just have to be careful. Otherwise, you don't know. There are many silent killers uh, you know, at risk of sounding morbid, many silent killers, you know, blood pressure shooting up and you have no idea, you know, cause you feel good. You, you know, you can see, you have no headaches, no blurry vision. You feel fine until good Carlos, until you get to the doctor and you check your pressure and it's 190 over 90. You never would have known. So get your checkups. All right. Um, let's see. Well, since Dr. Oates is here, I'm going to put her on the spot. We can want our bigger issues if you see. That's right. That's right. She's talking uh, from a dentist perspective. So, Dr. Oates, I'm sorry. I'm going to put you on, on blast here. You asked some good questions <laughs> on Instagram about uh, sleep and um, fibroids. So, I'm going to go jump into the sleep hygiene. 
Um, so she said, to me, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you wanted me to keep it private. That's okay. We'll talk about it. They forget. They can't see your face. All right. Telling me, <laughs> telling me to put down my iPad and not use my timers doesn't work <laughs> for sleep. Sleep hygiene, folks, is majorly important, okay? Y'all show Dr. Oates some love. Y'all say, we got you, girl. Don't worry about it. We got you. Um, sleep hygiene is majorly important. If you if you happen to have, you know, here's a shameless plug. If you happen to have my first book, hint, <laughs> available on Amazon and at docswiner.com. Um, if you have my first book about the superwoman complex, I like white noise. Yes. Um, my first chapter is dedicated to sleep. I call it sweet sleep because it's my favorite hobby. Uh, one of my favorite sayings is if I could list sleep as a hobby without looking lazy, I would because I'm a master at sleep. Sleep hygiene, majorly important for adults as it is babies. <laughs> Dr. Nicole, that, that's what I that's what I like to say. Sleep is majorly important. So um, each of us actually, let me ask you guys, how much sleep should the average adult get per night? What's a good range of, of hours per sleep or hours per night of sleep? What's what's normal? What What's recommended? Eight hours, okay. Good answer. Eight hours, okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? So if you look it up, the national recommendations um, says that six to eight hours of sleep per night is what we should all shoot for. And that's almost regardless of age. I used to think that the elderly didn't need six to eight. Good, Carlos. I used to think the elderly didn't need as much sleep. And so, you know, if they got less hours, no big deal. Apparently that's not true. Regardless of age, everyone needs at least six to eight hours per sleep. And uh, six, that's right, six to eight. So, you know, of course, closer to seven and eight, even better if you can. But you also want to get restful sleep. So if you're not getting that much at night, even if you don't necessarily feel tired during the day, you could be doing your body and your health a disservice. So let's get back to the question. She said that telling her to put down her iPad and use her timers doesn't work. I think I think she's um, referring to timers that you can like put timers on your TV if you happen to to listen to that at night or timers on your computer and it shuts off at a, a certain time just in case you fall asleep or that's a that's a key a clue that you need to go to sleep right okay so um, you know part of this is just knowing that sleep is a priority and you got to do what you got to do so. There are some nights, right? Thank you for the hearts. There are some nights when you got to stay up late. You got to get work done. You know, Dr. Oates is probably doing some notes, charting some about some patients she saw early in that day. So she's just charting away doing her thing. But guess what? You got to cut that off at some point. I, at this point, I try my best not to take too much work home. Right? See, <laughs> you're working as we're talking, working lunch. So I try my best to not take work home on a regular basis. Um, there are some nights when I got to do what I got to do or try to get things done. It's not a quick email, but at, you know, the kids go to bed at eight o'clock. I try to shut it down because you need at least two hours of quiet time just to kind of wind your body down, just like babies do. You need that wind down time so that you can relax. It's hard to like go straight from your TV, straight from your phone, straight to sleep. If you can do that, God bless you. That's wonderful. But on, you know, in general, it's hard to do that. So you have to give your body some time to kind of shut down gradually. So. If you got to use that iPad, if you got to be on that computer and be a background oxygen reducer, good, good. So what I do, by the way, DR1908, is if I am on my phone, I dim the light. So I turn it down so that the, you know, the light is less stimulating to the brain. Because even though you're in, you know, you're in quiet moments and you're, you're you know, thinking you're doing something quiet, even some of the ebook uh, things like Kindle, turn, dim the light down so that your, your brain is getting less stimulation. Okay. Dr. Oates also says she likes white noise. So that's good, but you can do something that in, um, requires listening and not looking. So you can buy some of those white noise machines. You can buy some CDs that have C or you know ambient music in the background to help you relax a little bit. So we want you to get more sleep. The other thing, of course, shameless plug, <laughs> natural things that can help you to rest. So of course, I talk about my sleep serum, my superwoman sleep serum that I have. That uh, incorporates lavender, um, melatonin, and even prim evening primrose oil. Have you heard of these ingredients? Give me a yes if you've heard of these ingredients before. Melatonin, evening primrose oil, lavender. Yes, good. Dr. Nicole's heard of it. So as a family doc, I'm writing these prescriptions, of course, all day long. I try not to, but clearly they're, yes, good, good. Heard of these natural ingredients, good. Um, Ambien and trazodone and temazepam, all these things that we use for sleep all the time. Unfortunately, 
Uh, melatonin didn't work for you? Okay. Well, Dr. Oz, I might send you, since you're so sweet and you always are so supportive on social media, I might actually send you a little jar of my, it's an eight ounce jar. I actually have it over here that has, um, so it's body butter, meaning it's moisturizing. You put it on and it makes the skin feel good because it has essential oils and all of that in it. Um, actually, I'm going to go grab it. Hold on one second. I'll show it to you. Here it is. <laughs> Here it is. So it has a combination of melatonin, lavender, evening primrose oil. Melatonin is one of my most favorite um, things over the counter that helps the body. We all have it naturally in the body, um, but it helps the body to relax and it tells the body it peaks at night when it's time to go to sleep. So rub some of my elbows, make sure we're not ashy today. Um, but as you can see, it's a lotion, it's a cream. I use it throughout the day. It, it won't knock you out if you're not ready for sleep. But at night, what I tell folks to do, mm, yes, what I tell, and it smells good. It smells lavendery, if I, if I can say that, lavendery. So this is the label. So this is mine. So me and my assistant, Amy, frequently gets migraine headaches. We'll get to that, Carla, so let me forget that. So this is what I made with my assistant, Miss Amy, who owns Amy Melissa Natural Products. She made the stuff, you know, she put together the cream and the body butter. We added the lavender. Um, there are some just instructions there. We added the lavender, the evening primrose oil. Evening primrose oil, by the way, if you're familiar with, like, um, uh, hormonal things or postmenopausal type things. It helps with hot flashes. Even if you don't have any hormonal symptoms, it can help to relax. Lavender helps to relax. So people have been very pleased. This is an eight ounce jar. It'll probably last you about three months if you, if you use it every night. Hopefully you don't have to have it every night, but people have been pleased. I sell it for $15 at uh, my Doc Swiner store and I've been very happy. It smells good, keeps you moisturized, has shea butter, all the essential oils. So anyway, Dr. Oates, that might be a way. So melatonin didn't work, even if you don't necessarily buy the serum. Um, evening primrose oil, lavender. What are some other good ones? Y'all know about some other good natural um, supplements that you can use for sleep? Not coming to mind quickly enough. Chamomile is another one. See if that'll help kind of relax your mind a little bit. Um, and we're just, I mean, we're busy women, Dr. Oates. I don't, you know, you have a dental practice. I have a medical practice. We got family. We got friends. We got people pulling on us, needing us. I mean, it, it's life is busy. The other thing that can help to sleep is and another thing that I have to force myself to do is to exercise. Yikes. How much exercise per week should we get, guys? Worth trying. Good. Yeah. Yeah, so Dr. Oates, if you want a jar, I'll, I'll, I'll send you one. Just have to uh, email me after this or uh, send me an IG message. So um, exercise. Are we exercising, everyone? How much exercise should we get per week? Let me see you throw it out. Four to six hours per week of exercise? That's strong. That's strong work. <laughs> How many minutes does that calculate into? 60 times 40. Can't do my math, 240. Three to five days. Okay, good. 30 minutes a day, good, 100. There you go, DR1908. She must be reading the literature. Yes, so the literature says, the national recommendation says 150 minutes per week. Divide that up however you want. Divide it up into, all right, I'm going to do the Zumba class twice a week. That lasts, you know, at least an hour and a half. I'm going to go walk in 30 minutes every day. However you want to do it, 150 minutes per day. So it will help to relax your body at night so you can get some sleep. Don't exercise too late in the evening, though. If you exercise too late to bedtime or too close to bedtime, sometimes it's really hard to fall asleep. All right, let's move on. Let's see. Fibroids. Um, fibroids um, are very, very, very common, particularly in the African-American population. Women um, in their 40s, very common. Um, not sure what the relation is or what the association is. We think there may be a dietary component, you know, our horrible Western diet may have something to do with it. Um, our weight may have something to do with it. Genetics may have something to do with it. But fibroids are extra um, growths of tissue. We call them tumors. They're not cancerous, but we call them tumors because it's extra stuff that's not supposed to be there. But it's normal tissue that overgrows. And that can be inside the uterus. That can be outside the uterus. I'm sorry, Carla, I was talking about women's stuff. <laughs> but it can cause, you know, um, abdominal distension. It can cause heaviness, feeling like you're carrying all the weight in your belly, um, abnormal periods, extra cramping, pain, all of that. 
So a question was asked about any new updates in decreasing the size and prevention. Um, what I know of from a medical standpoint is um, you can either treat it with hormones. So even if you're not necessarily needing birth control for birth control purposes, the hormonal component can actually shrink the size of the, or shrink the size or actually prevent the growth of the fibroids. So IUD, Nexplanon, birth control pills, et cetera, they can actually decrease or prevent them um, from growing. Number two, of course, is surgery. So you can either have surgery to decrease the blood flow or you cut off the blood supply to the fibroids, remove the fibroids themselves or remove the entire uterus. So depending on how bad they are, and, and if they're not bothering you, you know, if you have an ultrasound, you see fibroids, you don't have to treat them unless they're bothering you. You know, very, 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 very rarely, I don't want to quote a percent because I don't want to be incorrect, but very rarely do these things ever turn into something bad. So leave them after menopause because you don't have the hormones floating around. They should shrink. It shouldn't be an issue, but clearly there are some, some ways to treat and prevent them. Um, there's, you know, I've heard plenty of studies about natural things that people sometimes will take. You know, I'm not as um, aware of things offhand that people are taking and natural supplements that can help shrink. If, if you all know of some things, please share. But um, we either leave them alone and do nothing. We take hormones to prevent the growth and shrink the size or we remove them in some way. So. I hope that's helpful. All right. So I want to ask a question about calcium. Calcium. They want to know so many don't realize the importance of calcium and how what you take today. Thanks for the heart. How what you take today can affect your calcium stores later in life. I'm checking my time. OK. Um, calcium is hugely important. Hi, uh, Riva country, Riva country. Um, thanks for joining us on our Wellness Wednesday. We're doing a free for all Q&A. And Carlos, I've not forgotten about your migraine question. Um, so calcium is vitally important. It's important for high. It's important to help our bodies run. It's a um, it's an electrolyte. It's a vitamin. It helps our bodies and our bones to grow. Helps our heart to beat and do all those things properly. Um, so Southern eight twenty one, Miss Renee, if you're here, she's the one that asked the question. So there have been a lot of uh, studies recently regarding calcium and more, more more specifically vitamin D. Calcium and vitamin D have to go hand in hand. So very important. If you are um, in your 40s and 50s, either approaching menopause, for men too, um, the older we get, the more important it is to have increased calcium and vitamin D intake, whether it be in dairy and veggies from the sun exposure, you get your vitamin D from the sun exposure um, and uh, mm -hmm. taking vitamins, of course. Vitamin D is, uh, I think, probably even more important because you can't absorb one without the other. And vitamin D has to do with your bone strength or preventing osteoporosis as we get older. Other important thing about vitamin D is people with low vitamin D, which is very common nowadays, particularly in the minority populations, because we think because of the melanin on the skin preventing us from absorbing sun and converting vitamin D into active vitamin D. Even more important um, for low energy. So people with chronic fatigue or feeling tired a lot, you may want to get your vitamin D checked because that can, um, you know, make a, a huge difference in how you're feeling throughout the day. So vitamin D and calcium, very important. What can I do to help my body absorb more iron? More iron. So iron rich, rich foods. And um, Carlos, I'm gonna get to migraines. He had a question about migraines. Um, take vitamin C with your iron. If you're taking supplements, it helps you to absorb it better. And then eat more iron rich foods, your leafy greens, your spinach, uh, liver, one of the good old things. <laughs> Who's eating liver nowadays? Liver is probably the highest uh, content of, of iron in food. But um, I think maybe like beets. You can get a whole list of iron-rich foods. And if you're taking iron supplements, if you um, take vitamin C, that helps to absorb it better. All right, last question, because I don't want to talk to you to death. Carlos Chill 92 had a question about migraines. Okay. So first question is, has she actually been diagnosed officially with migraines? We say migraines a lot, but you know, there's a very specific definition for migraines and what, what we call migraines may not actually be a migraine. And I ask that because migraines also have very specific treatments that are different from just other types of headaches. So when I think migraine, by the way, I think, she, okay, good. So she's actually been diagnosed. I think one side of the head worse than the other, I think seeing um, what we call an aura or floaters or uh, changes in your vision beforehand, um, very sensitive to light, very sensitive to sound, often with nausea. Okay, that's what I, I call a migraine. 
Um, so if you've officially been diagnosed with migraines, the question is how often are you having them? If you're having them more than once or twice a week, that's very significant and can be very debilitating, debilitating and life altering. Cause where did most of these folks end up in the bed in a dark room, can't work, can't eat, can't, you know, any movement or sound that makes things worse. So if you're taking a lot of medications to try to, to treat headaches, you want to talk to your, doc your doctor about prevention. Okay, so the way that I talk to people about it is I have them actually keep a diary to see if you can figure out your triggers. You know, migraines have triggers, um, whether it's um, stress, whether it's chocolate or wine or cheese or certain food that they ate or lack of sleep uh, the night before. You know, you often can identify if you think back a trigger from the day or the night before that probably brought the headache on, you know, hormones, menstrual things, you know, did it bring it on? Once you can identify a trigger, you can, of course, avoid it. Because I'm, by, I'm about that natural life, <laughs> somewhat. Vitamin B2, Carlos, which is also called riboflavin. If you find vitamin B2 at the store, um, if she takes a high dose on a daily basis, thanks for the hearts guys, a high dose on a daily basis up to like 400 milligrams per day is supposed to prevent or decrease the frequency of headaches. So vitamin B12, excuse me, vitamin B2, riboflavin, high doses like 400 milligrams a day, which can be annoying because they don't sell 400 milligram uh, tablets, they sell like 50. Um, or you can get her doctor to write her prescription for some of the higher doses. Taken every day is supposed to cut back significantly on any type of headache, particularly migraine. Lastly, preventative medicine. So that she's not taking or popping Imatrex or other types of pills, you know, frequently. There are prescription prevention medicines that can hopefully cut back on how often she's having a headache. Things like amitriptyline, propranolol, things of, these nat of that nature can actually prevent the headaches from happening so frequently. So I hope that helps. And make sure she's checking her blood pressure and make sure that blood pressure is well controlled too and not the cause of uh, or the trigger of a headache. So I hope that helped guys. Thank you so much for the hearts. I'm glad. I'm glad. Yeah, I hope that helps. Tell her I like, follow up with our doctor about it. All right. So Super Women Sleep Serum. We talked a little bit about it for Dr. Oates who asked about getting more sleep. If you are interested, if you go to my website, docswiner.com and you find the store, the online store, we have it there available. Yay, I'm so glad you were here. I'm glad you uh, got on Periscope and, and got on and, and did your thing. Um, I am, of course, a speaker. So if you ever want me to come and do some teaching at your conference, your event, your book club, et cetera, let me know. Contact me at Doc Swiner. And again, I like to do this uh, Wellness Wednesday weekly and sometimes during the weekends, depending on my time. Um, but I have, um, you know, a lot of things that I like to do on social media. So please join me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'm there. I'm everywhere. So join me. Thank you all so much for following. Please share this out. You're welcome, Dr. Oates. <laughs> Thank you. And share this on Twitter. Share this on Periscope. I really appreciate you guys. And I will see you next week. Bye-bye.